Hello, today I'm entering into Feather Draws 14's 30 Subs Contest. The theme was to design a character based on your favorite song, and I actually made two designs and quite a bit of artwork for this contest. The songs I chose are Tongues and Teeth and Canary in a Coal Mine, both by the Korean Wives. Finale by AJR is technically my favorite, but it has curse words, it's kind of personal, and I don't really have any visual inspiration for it, so I just went with my second and third favorite. And they go really well together, these two songs, so I made the stories intertwined. The first character I have is called Oleander, and she's a rain wing. Um, as you can probably see, a lot of her colors is based on the album art of The Fool in Her Wedding Gown. Um, but it's also partially based off of this thing I have called synesthesia, which is basically where my senses get all mixed up. One of the types I have is quote-unquote hearing colors, which is probably what you've heard of if you've heard of synesthesia. And so it's partially based off of those colors too, but... For me, the colors of the song actually go really well with the album art, which is rare, but it was nice. I still lean more into the reddish browns of the cover art and added some flares of green and blue that are more vibrant than what I quote-unquote see. I also gave her long tongues and teeth, because, you know. And I made her sharp and dangerous looking. The other character I have is called Canary, and she's based off of the song Canary in the Coal Mine, also by the Crane Wives. Her colors are a lot more based off the canary bird, like the song says, but I gave her like hints of purple and blue, well, not hints. I gave her purple and blue. I wanted to make the edges of her wings look almost like burnt, like she'd set her feathers on fire and burned away. So yeah, or like the dark soot of the coal mines is staining her. Um, she's a lot friendlier looking. I, I, w I oscillated between making her a rainwing silkwing hybrid or just a plain silkwing. So there may be slight inconsistencies in the design in that part, but otherwise I'm pretty happy with I really like both of them and I love their stories. Quick warning before we begin the story, it contains elements of violence and toxic or abusive relationships, so just be aware. I always knew she would be the next queen of the Silk Wings. She was kind and compassionate, always willing to help those in need. She was the eldest royal daughter and the most favored by her people. So she knew the day her mother decided to abdicate the throne, she would be chosen as the next queen, as was Silkwing tradition. Oleander, on the other hand, had a much different childhood. She was raised in the Rainwing's secret stealth army, trained for combat and spying. She was cunning, ruthless, willing to take what she wanted at the expense of others. It was only natural when a war started between the tribes that she was sent out as an ambassador and spy to the Silkwing Kingdom to try and convince, or manipulate, the future queen to join the Rainwing side while gathering intelligence on the Silkwing. While at first Oleander was just another ambassador, Canary soon grew close to the Rainwing and eventually fell in love. Oleander's plan to get close to the princess was becoming successful and she'd already gathered plenty of information to send back to her elites. However, as she grew closer to Canary, something changed. Oleander fell in love too, and as she did, her plans began to change. Although, not necessarily for the better. Canary eventually confessed her feelings to Oleander, and they began a relationship. Oleander told Canary about her original mission and her plan to abandon it. While Canary was disgruntled at first, she soon got over it and loved Oleander with all of her heart. Oleander loved her greatly, too, but the love wasn't quite the same. Her love started to have an effect on Canary. Oleander's selfish and cruel behaviors, while at first glance hidden behind a charming mask, began to rub off on Canary. The princess grew colder, more callous. She lost much of the kindness she'd held before. She grew into a cold, empty husk. Oleander draining her dry of everything good in her. Then it got worse. She got, started to get even more cruel, more ruthless, and she started to enjoy it. She'd given all of her goodness over to Oleander in her love for the dragon, and now had nothing left. The old dragon she used to be was now lost. One day, Oleander's influence had finally been enough. 
Canary challenged her mother, Queen of the Silkwings, to a duel for the throne. It was a great shock, as the Silkwing tradition had been to peacefully pass it down to the chosen heir. But her mother could not refuse, and using skills and techniques Oleander had taught her, Canary won the battle and became Queen of the Silkwings. Oleander, of course, became her mate and queen consort, queen consort, and with the two of them in charge, a dark fate with, was coming to the Silk Kingdom. Canary's subjects soon learned the truth about their new queen, as evidenced by how she challenged her mother, but by then, it was too late to do anything. The Silkwings never joined the war on the Rainwing side. That idea was long abandoned by Oleander. Instead, a reign of terror began, plunging the Silkwings into one of their darkest eras in recent history. They began to execute dragons for the side and fractions, especially anything spoken against their queens. Ever stricter and harsher rules were enforced, and soon the Silkwings began to forget what freedom really looked like. Meanwhile, the queens were busy losing their humanity. Oleander and Canary still loved each other deeply, but now Canary was paranoid and cruel, and Oleander often acted as a, as a puppeteer and would create laws and rules to fit her own needs. The old Canary was gone, lost in the coal mine, and the new one reigned in fear in her place. Maybe someday the Rainlings will be able to escape their tyranny, but for now, Oleander and Canary rule the Silkwings. So yeah, that's her story. It was kind of dark. I'm not sure when it would take place, probably a few centuries after, like, canon books. It could actually fit into the Falling Star if I wanted it to. But yeah, sorry if it was kind of dark. I thought it fit the songs really well, at least their relationship. And I really want to write about them more in the future, so maybe I will. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Bye!